guys and welcome back to my next Patreon tutorial. So for today I thought we would draw a macaw in flight. Now I've got the reference material up here um, and I'll pop it somewhere for you to be able to download so you can have it a bigger a bigger version of it when you're drawing it as well. Um, so like my hyena I'm going to do a bit of a draw along. Um, today I'm just going to use a black pen so that you can see the lines. Um, I think sometimes red can be a bit hard to see. So I'm just going to draw straight in back or point pen um, and show you what I do, especially when it comes to starting off with a light sketch and then building up with the marker um, or the pen um, on the later stages when we start to refine our drawing. So when I like to draw birds, I always like to start off with a placement of the head and a placement of the body. So I've got my reference photo and I'm just going to start with a light circle roughly where I want the head to be. So one thing to bear in mind when you're drawing something like a bird in flight is to take into account the kind of extra space that you'll need for the wings and for the tail. So McCall wingspans are quite large. I'm just kind of factoring it in ever so slightly. So what I tend to do is I just give a kind of rough kind of placement, very, very light. You probably can't even see that. A very light kind of sketch of where the wing, uh, the, the furthest away wing will go. Um, just so I get an idea of where the placement of these are. I also like to place the body. So birds are quite easy. They always like start with a circle and then you start with like an egg shape for the body around about here, just taking into account where the flow of this bird is. One thing you can do to give yourself a good sense of the line of action is to literally draw a line of where you want the body to flow. So starting off where the head is, I'm just gonna draw a line that extends out like that. Very faint to the point where it kind of breaks up here. You can't really see it, but I'm just drawing this guide in. So give yourself an idea of where you want the head to the tip of the tail to go. So once I've placed the head and the kind of rib body area, because this takes into account pretty much the rest of the entire bird, I'm going to pop in this closer wing as well. But all I'm going to do is Bearing in mind kind of an idea where, so this is the head, there'd be a neck or the um, sort of vertebral structure that comes down here. Your rib cage would be about here, pelvis down here. The shoulders kind of sit towards the back of this area. So I might just pop a little circle in there. So just to give myself an idea. And I'm going to extend this line out this way. So one thing you can do is kind of take into account how the wings kind of connect to the shoulder. You've got this lovely sweeping, almost UV shape here. You know, when you're drawing a, a bird, you do a very stereotypical bird, you might draw the M shape, or you might draw the kind of flying shape like that, a V shape. Um, it's, it's, it comes from a place where it's kind of realistic, really. The shape of the wings is very much a U shape um, or a V shape, depending on, you know, what kind of stage of the, the flight or the flap that the bird's in. So what I like to do now is I might just pad out the rest of the wing. So I'm just going to kind of extend this back here, drawing a kind of triangle shape here, because you see in the reference, the underwing, there's a triangle shape there. I'm just going to pop that in very loosely. The primary feathers, or the secondary feathers, sorry, if you saw my wing tutorial, these are the secondary feathers, they kind of extend here. And the front of the wing and the back of the wing are quite parallel. There's almost a rectangular shape there. So I'm just gonna sketch in very faint lines here of where the secondary feathers will come off. And I might even just connect that shape up just so I have an idea of what that shape looks like. Now the rest of the wing, curves up you see how the feathers because of the way that the wind flows or the air movement the feathers kind of curve up like that and i'm not going to draw every individual feather right now but i'm just going to pop in this shape instead it's sort of a rounded triangle so you've got this kind of triangle shape here bearing in mind that the tip has been cut off i'm just kind of sketching that shape so I might just do the same as well for the other side. Taking into account the shape that I can see, you've got the upper part of the wing, which is sort of like this 
semicircular shape here. I'm just moving this line, so I'm aware that this, this shape here isn't quite where I want it to be, but that doesn't matter because in the end it's just a sketch, um, and I'm just going to bring that line back a bit here and round that off to kind of intersect around about here. So that's the that's the secondary but there's much like this. This is the underside of the secondary, this is the top side of the secondary on the uh, right hand wing, the wing furthest from us. So I'm also going to then extend this line back up again and just kind of do that triangle shape here again, take into account kind of perspective. This wing's ever so slightly higher up and I'm just going to draw that line in. Not worried too much right now about the individual feathers, we'll sort that out as we go. So very light, very light indeed. You could be using a pencil if you prefer right now because you might want to say erase the construction lines. I just love drawing in ballpoint pen, I think it's really fun. That's personal preference, entirely personal preference. So I might then go in and start refining these shapes a little bit. So the circle that I drew for a head, its head is a little bit larger than I want it to be. So I'm just going to kind of bring it down, top of the head being quite flat, and I'm just going to cut that off there. Apologies for the aircraft flying around outside in the background. I'll try and tune it out when it gets around to processing. So I'm going to bring in that lower part of the, the head there and connect the kind of neck up to this circular shape or this oval shape I popped in for the rest of the body. So I might just draw in here the beak, the top part of the beak. So I'm just going to throw in this circle, semicircle area here and a sort of smaller circle, so oval shape here. I'm not worried too much about the detail right now. I find sometimes if you focus too much on the detail early on, um, it's much easier to kind of lose track of like the rest of the shape and end up you end up throwing off the proportions as a result. So tend to just be loose with the shapes at the beginning and then you can kind of start refining things later. Bring in that tummy area. And I can see where the upper leg, upper thigh connects. So I'm just going to pop in like a sort of semicircular shape here and that's just so I get an idea of volume um, and kind of where the shading will come in later on. Now, the body kind of continues quite nicely, or rather, sorry, the tail starts around about here. So I'm just going to pop in quite a long shape here for the top of those tail feathers. Often when macaws are in flight, their tails, the feathers kind of group together and they're quite pointed. Um, so we're not going to see too much definition with regards to the feathers. Um, we might just see one or two that we'll just sketch in later. That's how you get your basic shape down. So while you're at this stage, you can kind of look at things. And before you start placing any lines, you can just kind of sketch over. I'm aware that this might need to be angled ever so slightly differently. But this is only for kind of going for accuracy. At this stage, you can always start tailoring things and making them into your own style. So I've got that underwing in here, and I've got the coverts here. There's another layer of slightly smaller feathers that tuck in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sketching in the individual feathers. So we have that initial feather here, which is essentially the thumb, the thumb feather. That sticks up like that. Just take into account the shape of the feather and how the wind might be twisting it slightly. So it's kind of round up here and it narrows as it reaches the kind of wrist area of the wing. And then this one kind of extends up. It's kind of level with this one. Bring that down as well. So you can kind of see how these feathers overlap as well. I'm just lightly sketching and as soon as I get round to kind of refining things I'll sort these out later. But I just like to place the feathers knowing that all of these uh, primary feathers kind of originate from this point here where the wrist is. So they all kind of extend out like this in that kind of manner. 
or extend or originate from the same or very similar points right next to each other on the wrist of the bird. I'm just going to draw in the rest of these feathers. Taking into account that actually very little of the tip is visible at this point because they kind of overlap quite nicely. So actually what you can do instead of drawing every single feather is just kind of give the illusion by drawing the tips of the feathers and sketching in these lines. And the same for this wing here, so the base of the wing towards the secondaries. I'm just going to draw like a wiggly line like that. So what I can do then when it's connected to the body, extend that down and then just kind of sketch in those feathers. So I haven't drawn every single one, but you can tell that they're feathers. You can just tell by the fact that the way that you've drawn them, knowing that they all kind of like this. I'm not putting a lot of detail in because it's a sketch um, and it's kind of a study as well at the same time. So there you have this wing that's closest to you and that's kind of getting to the point where we can start refining it and finishing it off. So we also have this further away, this wing on the other side of the body. So following that line, this kind of this curve gives the sense of the volume of the wing. And actually what I'm going to do is sketch in this upper side. This is kind of where the coverts are, or the converts. Converts, coverts, I think they're coverts. I'm just going to sketch that line in and very loosely throw in some extra curved lines for where the secondary feathers are. Now for the rest of the wing you've got the slightly smaller feathers here. You've got another layer of feathers that extends like this and kind of connects up to this point. And then you've got your larger secondary feathers as well. So I'm just going to draw those in. Kind of flicking my eyes right now back and forth between the reference and the page. Just focusing on throwing on those shapes. Throwing those shapes. <laughs> there we go. Nice. There's only a few feathers there of the smaller ones. You can either bring in those extra layers there, paying into attention the shape of those feathers. And just kind of overlap them. So there you have it. There's the kind of basic structure. And what I can do now is I'll place the face as well. So that's where the kind of cheeks are. Very lightly curve that down. And just pop in a little circle for where the eye is. I'm not going to go into too much detail now, right now. Good. The feet are tucked away, you can't really see them. Don't worry about that. You've got some lines here, and there you are your tail feathers. So. Right, and then we'll go on to the next stage, which is refining the sketch. So for this stage, I've taken away the reference. Um, I'm not going to use it for this, but feel free to carry on using the reference if you want to kind of maintain some accuracy. Um, but I like to get to this point and start kind of doing my own spin on it personally. Um, so I've zoomed in um, so you can kind of get an idea of what it is that I'm doing. So I always say it, I like to start with the face of the animal. So I'm just going to start refining that beak. And popping in kind of a darker line, a bolder line. Kind of making it more visually appealing. I like to kind of taper it. So thicker at one end, perhaps some thinner in the middle. And bring in that top beak there. It's quite curved. Um, and then bringing in towards where that mouth is. And you can either do this stage and leave the shading or you can shade as you go. Ultimately it's up to you. But you can kind of copy me and go with me as I go, that's also fine. So I've just popped in the curve of that upper beak. Pop in that darker bit, because there's never so slightly darker part of the upper beak that kind of curves up round. And just gives it slightly less kind of an oval shape, but more of a, a 
um, kind of an upside down teardrop, giving it, making it a bit more organic when you add in kind of curves that just make it a little bit more interesting. So I'm also going to bring down that lower jaw and curve that as well. And bring that in like that. So you have your lower part of the beak. I'm going to just throw in a bit of shading here just because I like to go as I go. Um, and also the benefit is when you're walking, especially if you're working for a, with a pen, for example, if you forget all the way to here and then go back over, there's a chance of smudging it. So I like to just kind of work away from the front, especially because as a right-handed person, obviously if you're left-handed, you can do it the opposite way or, you know, whatever works for you ideally. So I'm just going to bring in the forehead, curves away. Kind of plateaus at the top here. So I'm just kind of giving a bit more sketchy look, throwing in some thicker lines. You can add a bit of texture here if you want, such as just a couple of lines there to kind of symbolise feathers. It's entirely up to you, and that's why I like not looking at the reference for this this kind of stage. So kind of bringing in the the cheek. And pop in our eye here, like so. The course have quite. Um, I think they. I think they're featherless. I think that's why they're kind of pale, and they're quite wrinkly as well. So I'm just going to pop in some shading, make it all textured. So underneath the beak, I'm going to bring in that lower chin area, and through to the neck and also throw in a few more lines to kind of add in that texture. Bring in that little breast area, pad it out right down to the tummy. Again, just going to throw in a bit of interest, take into account that there's a kind of a darker area here where the shadow is on the bird. And under the wing as well, there's probably going to be a bit of shade but this is entirely up to you how you go about doing this. So yeah, like I said, I tend to shade as I go, um, but that's just personal preference, really. It's entirely up to you. Cool. So I just bring this down. You can start working on that wing. I'm going to start at the top here. Kind of drawing that feather. There's a lot of curves in a macaw wing feather. They're very uh, broad and rounded. So I can also overlap that next feather and hook them in together. The same again. Hook them in together and then curve out like that. Hook them in together and curve out. Cool. Bring in that lower bit. Now I've got this overlapped top half of the other feather here. I'm just going to bring in that lower side like that. In the top bit, the top part there. Kind of pay attention to where the primaries end, like so. Curve in there. These feathers are like slightly less pointy, so I just round them off like that. I'll do the next layer of feathers over the top. Just kind of bringing in that curve over the top here, like so. And then rounding them off as I go. Like so. I like to do quite heavy outlines um, with my sketches, so I'm just going to throw in some outlines here. Bring that down and connect that up here. There you go. So I'm just going to draw the next layer of feathers here. It's only about three feathers here, so I won't do too many. And connect those up like so. 
There you are. Good. So now I'm just going to draw in the kind of upper half of the primary feathers, the primary coverts here. I'll draw in a bit of texture. I'm not going to draw every single feather because the feathers get quite small here. Um, and I'm not a particular one for drawing lots of detail, but just kind of giving an idea. Especially here with this bird, um, the colours are, you know, you've got red, yellow, blue. Um, and by kind of just refining them like this, you can kind of imply that there are different colours. If you go on to colour it, that's awesome, that's fine. Um, whatever you like to do. I'm just going to hatch in some basic shading. Nothing too too crazy for this this particular sketch. I'm just going to refine in these secondaries. Again, I'm not going to do too much detail for this because you can't really see. You can kind of kind of see the individual feathers, but I might just throw in some curvy lines here. I kind of leave it at that. I probably won't go too much into drawing each feather. Um, I might throw in some shady bits as well. So we've got the quill of the feather kind of goes just just off center of these feathers at the top. And you can kind of see those. So I'm just going to draw in an extra line. But what I'm going to do, instead of going too much into that, I'll just do some shading on the lower half of the feather. Like so. Just adds a bit of interest and volume to those feathers. And you get to kind of this point and the lower half of the feathers are in shade. Again, it's entirely up to you how you go about doing this. I'm just going to throw in the darker parts like this and cover the whole of the secondary feathers rather than going into each one. Do the same here. Hatch across the, the group of feathers like that. So that's the wing that's furthest away. I might refine these feathers a little bit more just to make them a bit more interesting and stand out a bit. So kind of make the the outline bolder. It just makes it smoother. Like so. Cool. So let's work on this next wing then. I'm going to bring in that upper part of the, the wing here. Paying attention to how it curves, especially with the wrist kind of hooks here. Like so. And curve these feathers up. Pay attention, they kind of go from narrow to rounded to narrow again. And that's basically because the feather is twisted. It's the same for the next one. Narrow, rounded, narrow. Top, this one curves out. And it doesn't um, widen too much, the, the the shape of it doesn't change too much, so I'm just going to do a regular old curved feather here for these ones. And so I'm going to kind of sketch in the overlaps here. So the feather underneath kind of overlaps the one under. Like so. So I'm keeping it quite sketchy, quite loose, um, and then I'll just refine it a little bit more as I go on to the next stage. completely missed that, didn't I? <laughs> How rude of me, I'm so sorry. I'm going to just go over what I did. So I'm just refining each of those feathers, 
doing the overlap bit here, thickening those outside lines. There you go. Like so. So you can kind of extend those feathers here if you choose to. Paying attention to where they kind of originate from is along this part of the wing here. Like so. So you've also got an under layer of coverts. I kind of go under here. There's a section of the wing that zigzags down here. So what I'm going to do, instead of putting in every single feather, I'm just kind of doing the zigzag line and pressing a little bit more in places and kind of easing off the pressure as well. And that gives this nice kind of thick, thin look to the wing. Like I said before, that the wing, the feathers are quite small here, and especially when you're doing a small sketch, um, it can get quite overwhelming to do every one, especially if you're doing lots of detail. So I tend not to worry about it. Um, and then I'm going to just throw the same in here for this underwing part where it reaches the body, like so. I'm just throwing a bit of shading here, so it's ever so light, light, it's ever so little bit more light. There's a little bit light on the edge here, so I'm just gonna excuse my wording. <laughs> Don't know what I'm saying. So I'm just gonna extend that shadow up here, see, but leave a bar of less shaded area, like so. Just adds a bit of depth and volume. And for the underside of the wing here, I'm just going to do the same. Press, release, press, release, press, release, press. And that just makes this kind of thick, thin line feel a little bit more organic. That's the kind of word I would probably use, just adding a bit of more organic texture to the wing. Um, and I can kind of make it look a bit more interesting as well. Sketch in that under feather here. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just suggest the feathers here. I'm not going to draw every single one. Personal preference. Um, and I'm going to shade it over anyway. Just to throw in some cross hatching. And the same for under here. So that's just the way I go about doing these kind of study sketches. Like so. so. I'm just going to bring in that back of the thigh. This is kind of where the tail connects. So I've just thrown a bit more kind of zigzaggy lines here. I'll do the same here. And then you have the kind of tummy area. You can't really see the feet, like I said before. Um, so just kind of worry about doing the shape of the thigh. Because the I think the feet kind of tuck in underneath the tummy. I'm just going to throw in a few extra feathers here, but the main feathers extend like so. So I'm just going to extend that line really nicely, throw in another one here, a few very long shapes. Um, I'm sketching them in, you can do them as one long line like so. Um, but that depends on your confidence, really. So it looks quite sketchy, but that's because, you know, maybe the texture of my paper is not as smooth as it could be. Um, the lines I'm doing are much shorter and just kind of implying it without using my reference. So give a bit of shading here. Like so. There we go. So, our little macaw sketch. So that concludes our kind of 
uh, very basic sketching using a pen or you could have been using a pencil, whatever it is that you chose to use um, to do a McCaw in flight. Now it's entirely up to you what you do with this bit. You can either do some coloring if your material allows. Um, I think you can actually color over the top um, using something water-based for a ballpoint pen. So if you've got watercolors or inks, um, they can be used quite nicely over the top of a ballpoint pen. So I might do that just to kind of finish it off um, and share that at a later date. But um, yeah, that's how I go about um, sketching, sketching a bird. Um, I quite like doing these tutorials, as I said before. Um, I might throw in a bit of extra interest here and kind of you kind of hide those construction lines if you've done uh, done what I've done and done it in ballpoint pen. But just adding a bit of extra interest here. Um, hide up those other lines that I did before. But yeah, that's entirely up to you. Just a bit of shadow, or whatever you want to do. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you like. Um, I do apologize for any sound issues that may have occurred during the recording. Um, I changed to sit somewhere else to do this tutorial today just because the room I was in was so hot. Um, I'm currently, well, Britain is just kind of coming to the end of a ridiculous heat wave. Um, um, our country's just not, you know, <laughs> not used to it, not adapted to it. Um, so, our houses aren't really suitable and my office study room is actually really hot right now. Um, not very comfortable. So I've come to sit by the back door. Um, so it has meant that there have been planes flying over and all that. So I apologize. Um, I hope it wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, I hope this was useful. I've decided that um, I enjoy sort of doing tutorials so much. So I'm going to start doing uh, classes and more kind of personal ones so that you can kind of attend to a live Zoom, um, draw with me as I go, uh, interact with me, um, get asked some questions and get feedback. So I'm going to start planning those and I'll open up a waiting list very shortly for those people that would be interested. Um, I will be doing a discount for Patreons. Um, so whereas, you know, uh, someone that isn't a patron will pay a little bit extra, you guys will get a discount. Um, because of your loyal support. I really appreciate it. Um, so do keep an eye out for that. I will um, plug a link at some point so that you guys can sign up to the newsletter and kind of get an idea of when the classes are going to be and sign up if you wish to. Uh, but I hope you find this useful. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see you again for the next tutorial. So bye guys.